Hi, my name's Finley Shakespeare. Uh, I play modular synthesizer and I sing over the top of that. Uh, I play with drum machines and things like that to make, I guess, synth pop, but for the 21st century. So in my studio I use a various array of different synthesizers, um, some you know bought by from big manufacturers, you know, pre-made, but increasingly I'm building my own equipment um, using kind of modular things as like a, a platform for me to make build my own instruments easily. So that's the thing. The beauty of modular is that you, you know, you can build one circuit put it behind a front panel and then that's it. It's kind of nicely self-contained. And I'm kind of trying to take that idea really into the live case that's behind me. So I have a couple of electron sequences, a drum machine and a synthesizer. And then in the modular case, I kind of take um, different circuits, different modules that perform certain functions that are, um, you know, what I'm interested in, the kind of sounds that I want to get from a synthesizer. And I put them together like that. So um, I'm slowly, well, I'm, I'm trying to kind of bring the modular, you know, get it smaller and smaller, uh, both to travel with, but also so that it's easier to, um, to just have more going on, but also, you know, more performative. So yeah, I, I, I tend not to use this in the studio, um, which for me um, is quite nice because it means that the live set is always a little bit different to what I'm doing in the studio. <laughs>
My favorite synthesizer, I think, is the Korg MS-20. Um, so it's a synth that was designed in like the late 70s. And um, I, the one that I have is just one of the like big reissue things. Uh, but I've played on like the original thing several times and just the, again, it, it, for me, it has that perfect uh, mix of like performance versus almost, I guess, science with it. So, you know, the way that it's designed on paper, it's quite strange because it's not necessarily um, that amazing on paper. Like it's, it's a bit limited, but the, every single thing about it, I think is designed with this performance element to it. So things, you know, technically might not work the way that you expect them to, but when you actually start playing with it musically, it's just amazing. It's just perfect and it makes total sense. Um, and it sounds great. It's, it's really hard to make that thing sound bad, in, in my opinion. I know people would probably disagree with me, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I love the MS-20. My lyrics are kind of based on current affairs, really, and um, pretty depressing, like political stuff. Um, but I try and I try and kind of mask things a little bit because I think it's always you can tell whenever anyone's being, you know, directly political. To me, it always comes off a little bit um, awkward and difficult. It's you know, there are amazing protest songs out there but there are also terrible protest songs out there, you know, and, and I don't want to go and make music that, that, you know, yeah, maybe people from, I don't know, not even necessarily the UK, just England can relate to, and then no other country can, you know, I want this to, to relate to different people across the world in different situations. And um, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of it is kind of based on that and the anger that I think a lot of people in, in the UK, uh, Great Britain, even further in the West, you know, now feel because, you know, we are kind of being let down. I think particularly, you know, my generation. And it's, it's, um, it's hard, it's hard. But if I, can, if I can write something that someone listens to and takes something away from in, in either a positive way or in a way that speaks to them, then that's, that's great. You know, if it's, if it's any kind of call to arms, then fantastic. But um, I try, yeah, I try and keep things just abstract enough for people to kind of imagine what they want to imagine, really. <laughs>
I'm not sure if I'd say I was classically trained, but I, I learned piano for a long time as a, as a kid. And uh, it was really mainly, again, through synths, because from a really young age, I was kind of interested in all this stuff. And, um, you know, you see like video and photographs, like people like Jean-Michel Jarre and Van Gallis and, and Kraftwerk, and it's keyboards everywhere. So it's like, well, I should learn how to play keyboard. And that's really kind of like where I began, I guess, musically. And then um, I bought a really cheap like electric guitar as well and kind of self-taught how to play that a little bit. I'm really terrible at it. Um, and also I taught myself drums and then was kind of like tutored as well. Um, and I kind of ended up better at drums than I was keyboard. It was very strange. So I'm kind of more of a drummer than anything else. But um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a strange one because again, like my favorite you know, artists and musicians uh, uh, tend to not come from the music world at, at all. They're, they're you know, either interested in the visual arts and then they cross over to music or they are just completely, you know, bored of their surroundings and they just think well music might be interesting and 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 they get started in that regard so yeah i kind of try i've tried almost to kind of abandon everything that i was taught and, and that i learned through you know the academic sense or, or by playing piano it's it's kind of it's kind of a strange thing trying to reject all that after it's kind of been drilled into you a little bit <laughs> was never taught in singing no it's um i think again i've i've tried to sing for a long time and i think the only real way that i kind of got any better with it was i i had a job um it was like a university intern placement thing for a while and the drive the round trip from home to work was like about three hours long so what I would do is I would sit in the car and I would just sing along to whatever I had playing in, you know, on the radio, or on the stereo, or whatever. And, and that was kind of it, because it was just sat in a tin can and you can, you know, belt it out or you can be as quiet or as loud as you want to be. So um, I think in a way, bizarrely, doing that really long commute actually kind of gave myself a, a, like singing practice almost. It was really strange, but yeah. <laughs>
It's hard for touring musicians now. I, I'm very lucky in the fact that my uh, day job, so I, my, my day job really is designing and building this stuff. I run a small modular synthesizer company. Um, a lot of artists that I know who are, in my opinion, doing far more interesting things than I am and have been doing that for far longer, um, they can't necessarily make enough money to pay the bills each month and you know, sustain a living just through playing shows and through releasing music. I think uh, the whole thing with coronavirus and lockdown has been uh, very interesting because I think it's tweaked people's opinions of what is doable and what isn't. Um, Bandcamp has been a huge player to so many artists that I know and I hope they continue to be you know a positive force in the music world but I think you know now more than ever we need uh, promoters, agencies, venues to be open-minded about what they put on and to not necessarily think, well, I'm just going to follow the herd and put on, you know, every, you know, big touring act, you know, every day, every night, whatever. I think there needs to be a space for smaller artists. And, and that's kind of happening in the UK. Uh, new venues just opened up in Bristol called Strange Brew, and that's, that's amazing. Uh, we have Cafe Otto in London. But then outside of that, it starts to get a little bit tricky. You know, it, it, there's not necessarily dedicated venues, at least that I know of, where people can go and expect, you know, to hear something that they've never heard before, something that is completely outside of their comfort zone. And again, I, I understand, you know, that venues and promoters and agencies don't necessarily want to take risks, again, at the moment, post-coronavirus. But I think really for the musical landscape, they, they kind of need to, really. Cheers, I've been Finley Shakespeare, thank you. It's really good to be back in Europe and I hope I can do this more often really. I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think Great Britain is in a very, very strange place at the moment. I hope that we get out of it very soon, but I think it's gonna take time.